I brand and market and let shit come to me. So what I did was, to answer your question, you're gonna love this. You wanna know the straight up answer to your question? Give it to me. I spent 12 hours a day on Twitter in 2007, because I thought it was gonna be big, amassed one of the largest followings on Twitter, and then Gillette Razors emailed me and said, you have 180,000 followers on Twitter. We'd like to understand what Twitter is. Can we pay you a consulting fee to tell us what to do? I said, yes, $80,000. They said, okay, that's how I got my first client. That's awesome. I wanted just to get that first new story out of you. You know, like, to me, to me, there's so much in, like, doing. And then, and then when I said listening, I had no fucking idea. So we went there to talk Twitter. Then they're like, we're doing an activation in Las Vegas. Can you do it? I'm like, uh-huh. You know, and then I was like, fuck. You know, and so then I just started asking questions. I think the biggest thing, and you know, it's funny. This goes back to how I started this talk, really. I spend all my time listening. The reason I want people to leave comments is I read them. I read all the comments. I read the ones that say that I'm the best, I read the ones that say that I'm the worst, I read the one, and all I do is I listen. It's so funny, I get made fun of when I ask Gary Vee because I'm always interrupting people. It's because I've gotten so good at listening, I know what the fuck people are gonna say before they say it. I just wanna move on, you know? So, one of the ways to get the next clients is to never let the last client fail. The only way not to let a client fail is to over listen and provide them what they want at all costs, which is why I always push against people selling to the bottom, because the bottom doesn't know what to do with it, and then you're never gonna win, you're just gonna be keep regurgitating the bottom. And so, that's how I did it. I did it first, and then I listened very carefully to the first 20 clients to make sure there was no chance that there was gonna be any vulnerability, and I built on the word of mouth of our quality deliverables for the client. There's a lot of actors out there who fail their career and then they decide they're gonna open up acting schools or they're gonna, you know, promise people sure. to have this career that they never had, all right? So what I do, I'm very much document over create. I kind of document my own career. Very fortunate at the moment to be working pretty regular. I've just booked another TV job recently. So I kind of like feel that like I can credibly not. Yeah, yeah, but you know you and I agree on this, except be careful because I promise you, I know in American football, I don't know, in your football league, but I promise you, some of the best coaches of all time weren't good fucking players. Yeah. These, I, these are just people who have, who have basically tried and then just not done it and then... Well, because then... something like acting and athletics and business is talent. Yeah. You do need, you do need that. The thing oh, that... oh, hold on. <laughs> talent. Like, news alert. If there was a system that everybody would be successful in around entrepreneurship, which means, let me define entrepreneurship for you. You get to do shit on your terms and make enough money to do it, every single fucking person on earth would do it. This is why I talk about self-awareness, right? So I know where you're going and I talk a lot about it as well, which is like, why the fuck are you buying shit from people who've never done it, right? Yeah. But I think it, we have to be a little careful to also know there's been great coaches who didn't win at the highest levels, but they understood the craft. If you were an actor who went through the process of acting school, went and tried to make it, got a couple commercials, did a little Broadway, did a little stuff, but never got there, you, you clearly got to see the people that had it and the people that didn't have it, you might then become aware and then you may be able to guide. The problem is, what you and I hate is when somebody sucked at it yeah. and makes pretend like they were good That's at it. it, yeah. That's the problem. Great coaches are like, they grab you and they say, kid, you fucking asshole. I worked every day for 15 hours a day. I fucking studied everything and you've got more talent in your left foot than I have in my whole body. You need to do this, not be like me. I'm fucking one and now we win. They're full of shit. Yeah. So, uh, that's, so that, that was sort of part one. So I was saying, so what I do is um, I kind of like, anytime I book a job I, um, you know, and I meet somebody, I kind of interview them, I get them on, I do a podcast. Yep. Um, I do um, two periscopes once, like, twice a week. They then get uploaded to YouTube. They get, the audio gets ripped to the podcast. So I'm putting content out yep. consistently all the time. Good. So much of it for free. Good. And then there's like a tiny little bit of it that I charge a premium um, subscription for on, a, on a, a community website that I run. Okay. I've got a lot of people signed up for the free stuff. They just don't think your product 
is worth it to pay for. Well, I was going to say, can you give away? Is it possible sometimes you're just giving away too much for free that people are like, I've actually got enough coming through for free that I don't really need to pay for anymore because I've got enough info? You know that thing you said about the actors? Yeah. That. If you're good enough, there's not too much is free. Yeah. So. That means you're not good enough. You can, I'm, Gary, I'm good enough, man, I swear. No, 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 be careful. The market decides if you're good enough, bro. It's, a, it's just, yeah, it's just, yeah. Thank you. I'm definitely good enough, guys. No, no, but give it, give it back to him. This is an important thing, because this, yeah. this is how you want to win? Yes. You're not good enough if you're complaining about not enough people converting. No, I was just saying, is, 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 is that a thing? Do, uh, really, because no, you, you, you give away so much. And All of it. That's what I mean. So you, 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 you never tempted to monetize any of that. I know you do like t-shirts and all that you know kind of why? stuff, but... Well, because you don't need to. Because I'm good enough. Yeah. It's, and, and the thing... So the, no, but this is, like, listen, like, I love when people go to conferences and they're like, oh, that guy's such a great marketer. He's one of the best marketers. I'm like, who the fuck is that person? Like, no, everybody knows a great marketer. I'm like, great marketers show up on the fucking cover of Entrepreneur Magazine and show up on CNN and like work with Budweiser, right? So like, like, no, I mean, like, here we are, we're talking it out, so I let you in the mic. Like, like, I could sell plenty. I'm leaving real fucking money on the table. I get people email me and offer me $100,000 to spend an hour with me. Yeah. Like, forget about your bullshit 30 bucks a month horse shit. I get people who offer me $100,000 to spend an hour. You know why? Because I'm good enough. And I still say no to that. So the answer is, that's it. The market is the market is the market. People write books and sell them direct and they want to use them as gateway drugs to other things. I get paid four million dollars to even write a book. You know why? Because I'm enough. good enough. <laughs> so think about it because then you can tweak it. If you actually believe that, the reason I'm forcing this one is because I need you to believe it. You need to understand it doesn't matter what you think about your content. You're not good enough if it's not converting to a number that you think. But you might not be willing to do shit to convert more because it's against your principles and I commend you for that. But then you have to get fucking good so that it happens what you're trying to do. You gotta ask yourself why are you even doing that? Like, is that's, you've decided that's a good business, that's fine, that's great. Like, these are all things that play out. Maybe if you gave a lot more content and mixed in some of the energy you, you're using to convert into a freemium model, into maybe some content that's more about your acting, maybe that lead to bigger roles and you'll monetize that way. And then you can arbitrage fame and then that's the biggest of all. You know? The reason I get six figures to give a keynote everywhere I go plus is because I give away the other shit for free. Because I'm good enough. One of the cool things about having DRock now document, I was saying backstage how much I wish that I'd been vlogging when I started at Wine Library because I think it would be important for everybody here to have the context of watching 10 years of working in a liquor store every single day for 15 hours a day in a vlog. You've heard the story, you know my background, but the reality is it's very hard to quantify unless you see it or you feel it. There's legitimately, how many people here under 35? Raise your hands. <laughs> yeah, I mean like, the level of disrespect I have for anybody under 35 that wants it tomorrow is so high, in a good way. I'm not mad at you. I just think that it's a very interesting time to be alive because the internet gives us opportunity for things to happen quick, but the reality is the people in this room that will win are the ones that take it slow. I think my energy and the way I roll speaks to a lot of fast-paced stuff but if you really peel away what I'm talking about, it's just super old school. I very much more associate with 70 and 80 year olds than I do with 20 and 30 year olds about the way this goes down. And so if I, look, if I could say anything, it's the following. There, there's no system, there's no process, there's no thing that's gonna make it happen faster there's only a couple of tried and true things. Number one, if you don't provide real, actual value to people in exchange for the money that you're asking for in return, you will lose over time. It happens every time. You might be able to make some quick cash, but you will never win long term, 
and you will go through the same shit over and over. There are plenty of 30, 40, 50 year olds in here who go up and down, up and down, up and down because their stuff is horse shit and it's not coming from the right place and they're looking to make a quick buck and some character on stage says that they got a process that's gonna make it happen fast and they're wrong. So that's number one. Number two, you're living in a time where you're competing against everybody else. Let me just make this perfectly clear. As fucking awesome as it is that it doesn't cost anything to produce content and put it on the social web, you're competing with everybody else. When I take out my phone and I go through Instagram and Facebook, I'm not just competing with people that write business books or put out entrepreneurial content, I'm competing with people that talk about football and milk and parenting and gardening and the news and the weather. There is one stream and we're all competing for that attention. So, I highly recommend that what you put out has a chance of succeeding while you also put out as much content as possible to break through. Here's what I think. I think that information is commoditized. There's so much information on the internet. It's hard to sell information, in my opinion, and feel good about it because there's so much of it. There's a reason my content is free. It's because the supply and demand of content is harder than ever to sell and differentiate if you want to feel great about it because there's so much content. Is your $300 thing actually available for four hours of Google searching? Is your $100 thing actually available for $9? The answer is yes. I'll save you time as you debate it. So, that's what I think about. I think that it runs tried and true for everybody. I think there's a couple things that really make sense to me, like this rule. You know zero people, zero people that actually created wealth. I don't mean your lucky friend who inherited his grandmother's money. I mean you don't know anybody on earth that created an actual business and made wealth without working their fucking face off. There is no such thing as passive income. It doesn't exist. You might have something that's working for a little while because you did landing page optimization and you figured out how to arbitrage Google for a few seconds, aka a couple years, but that will go away when Google changes its algorithm or when people go to mobile devices or when Facebook becomes more important, which means it was working for 24 months or 16, but now it's not which is everything but passive because you start building your life on it and then when shit hits the fan, you have to adjust and it really fucks you up. So these are the big things that I think about which is why are so many people looking for shortcuts when life is long? Why are people not willing to do the tried and true thing when if you just audit every single situation, it's always the same thing which is the people that run marathons win and the people that are running sprints lose. And it's because people lack patience, people are seduced by stuff, people make all their decisions on short-term money because they want stuff, people are insecure and want to posture in front of other people that they're successful. There's just a million fucking reasons why you do it, but it just doesn't make it right. So, I'm on a little bit of a mission. You know, like, my big thing is I build other businesses and then the Gary Vee stuff is kind of like out there and does its thing. Sure, it leads to opportunities, but for me, it's, I'm on a mission for legacy around this. I'm not, you know, I'll get, I'll get paid to come and speak, I'll write my books, but I'm not trying to create content as a top of the funnel thing to sell something at scale. Um, I'm not against that. I know the far majority of people want to do that. Mazel tov, knock yourself out. It's just not the way I see it because I don't think that's how the trends play out. And if you're good enough, you don't need it. So these are things that keep playing over and over in my mind.